Hi, I'm Ross Barefoot with Horizon Web Marketing and the Horizon Web Marketing Academy. We've been walking through a number of free SEO tools and doing kind of walkthroughs and reviews of those tools recently, and so we're going to be doing another one in that series. And in this case, we're doing a, a series of tools that purport to check the SEO of your website and make recommendations so that you can improve your search engine optimization and one would hope you're standing in Google search results. Now the tool that we're going to review today is called SEO Analyzer and it's from a company that I am otherwise not familiar with called SEO Centro. Now uh, one thing I might mention is the reason that I came up with the basket of tools that I'm checking here is simply that this is one of the tools that tends to rank on page one of Google when you type in the key phrase SEO checker, or website checker, things like that. So it ranks pretty high, but as you can see from taking a look at the interface, it's uh, pretty old school in terms of how it's built. Now, one of the virtues of this tool is it does not force you to part with an email address. It doesn't ask for any money, but you do have to pay for it by putting up with a lot of ads, at least on the introductory page, and you can see some of them are fairly intrusive like these flashing ads over here on the right and there's a bunch I think on this page I counted about seven ads so let's go ahead though and see uh, what you get when you go to input your website and, and uh, get an analyzer check as they call it here on your tool so I'm gonna go ahead and type in uh, the address of a project website that we've been using in order to evaluate these tools. So I type it in and it's got a very simple what they call an access code which some of you will recognize as basically a CAPTCHA uh, which is an anti-spam device. Let's see if uh, I got it correctly here. At least it's easy to read and we'll give it a second to do its stuff. And here we are with the um, results page from having done a check on artisansofcolorado.com just on the home page. It does offer an overall SEO score. It also offers something else, a speed score on the website. And um, I, I will point out that this particular page that we're checking has not been optimized for search, so no SEO has been done on it. And again, it's more of a project website than a, than a website that's being actively developed. Let's um, take a look at what um, comes back when we do one of these checks and you can see uh, that uh, we're starting to get some results here at the bottom and it's broken down by tabs. We've got SEO, content, keywords, social media, usability, reputation, speed, and server. And I do see a lot of the things here that I would expect to see on uh, an SEO check the website. It looks for a title tag, that's good. Um, and uh, one comment just on the side about the interface is it's a little bit overly subtle in my opinion because sometimes you can click and get some extra explanation here and other times you'll click and get nothing. So you sort of have to experiment. You'll notice here it'll give you something. And so what it does with the title tag and then with the meta description tag which it refers to as just the description is it'll check first of all that it has these key elements on the page and then it'll check for the length. Now this length here um, where it's uh, recommending a title of 60 characters or left, uh, less, this is um, really out of date because Google will now accommodate somewhat larger titles than 60 characters. And if Google doesn't really measure it by characters anymore, they me measure it by pixels. That's kind of a discussion in and of itself, but this is a little bit on the modest side because it, it is a bit out of date. It does have, though, um, what seems to be fairly current description length parameters here, up to 320 characters, and uh, now Google is accommodating meta description tags that long. What, the way it uh, judges relevancy here is if it'll take a look at the tag, and here is the description, the meta description tag used on this page. And then it will see, okay, are any of the words that are used in this meta description not found on the page? I think that's kind of a blunt instrument in terms of determining relevancy. Uh, there's a lot more to relevancy than that, than just having some keywords that 
or some words, just some words that are used that may not otherwise appear on the page. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of um, trust in the, the relevancy or at least not get too worried about it. It's much better to determine relevancy for yourself. As I go down here, it'll check on things like keywords, whether there's a canonical tag, a robots tag, a robots file. Now, as I'm going through here, if you're not really familiar with technical SEO, a lot of these terms won't mean anything to you. And that brings us to the other uh, point um, with a lot of these tools is sometimes they'll tell you things that are not, um, uh, that, that are not really, uh, that could be improved on your site. And yet, at the same time, it won't really give you much in the way of education about what they mean. So if you're a beginner and you're using this tool, you'll get some descriptions here. Um, and you'll get some additional information like on the robots.txt here. But I don't think you really are going to get enough information on your own to be able to deal with many of these issues unless you go out and do some research on your own. So for example, when you come here, it'll tell you basically what a robots.txt is. But I don't think it really gives you enough information if you're not already familiar with a robots.txt to know how a robots.txt should be structured for your particular site. Points out that there's a, no XML sitemap, another good heads up. I like the fact that it gives a, a preview of your search snippet. And that means uh, the way your site would appear if it was shown in search results by Google. It also does an analysis of the heading tags. And I like the fact that it has the heading tags laid out. In other words, you can easily see, all right, there's a whole bunch of what we call H2 or um, headlines of the second order of priority here. I like the fact that it shows that there's no H1, which is the, a very important SEO element on this page. I um, have tested this with multiple H1 tags. And typically, an SEO would tell you if you have multiple H1 tags, you should not. You should only have one H1. It doesn't alert you to that. So it gives you some information. But once again, I come back to the fact that you're going to really need to do some research on your own if you don't already know what to do with the information. So that's just kind of an overview of the um, SEO page there. Uh, if I go to the content page, it'll also tell me, besides just content, and I found this is kind of interesting that it puts things like frames on this tab. I would think that they might be better suited to the SEO tab just because it's more like technical SEO and not necessarily content. It will give me an alert that the content uh, amount of content is low. And that's probably uh, a good alert to have. Uh, it doesn't really, though, uh, address the point of the kind of content you would create, what type of content would be right for the site, and so forth. As I scan down here, then it'll give me some, um, some other information. For example, it'll, it'll show me the various developer components that are used, or programming components, I should say, that are used in, in loading the web page. This is pretty technical stuff. And so um, again, if you're a novice, this is going to be pretty much over your head trying to figure out, OK, why are they showing me all these things here? And they're primarily showing it to you just to show all the various bits and pieces that make up this particular web page. And if you didn't know that your web page was made up of a bunch of different files. It might be enlightening, but on the other hand, it doesn't really give you much in the way of actionable information. The, I'll give you an example here of where the information is a little too general. It says for image alt attributes. Well, first of all, um, the alt attribute is, uh, you know, it's a minor element to use in SEO. It does have some impact, but on the other hand, it just is measuring whether alt attributes even exist. And this is just alt attributes or alternative descriptions of images that appear on your page. So if you have words in the alt attribute, that is really irrelevant to whether you're making that serve an SEO function. The alt attribute needs to be have words that, are, that improve the relevancy of the page for particular search queries. At the same time, use that attribute for what uh, it's intended, which is to describe what an image is about. And they do tell you that, that that's what you should do, that the 
image should be that the alt attribute is used to describe the image, but then it doesn't give you much guidance as to how to use it for SEO. It will also then show the variety of URLs or links that are on the page, and it does give you an indication of whether these are follow or no follow links. But if you don't know what a follow and a no follow link is, this won't do you much good in the way of information. If I go to keywords, I like this keywords cloud here, and it does seem to be a, a, a pretty good, it does a, a fairly good job of picking out the uh, phrases and not just individual keywords, it, at least it tries to. Some of them don't make much sense, however, such as this, right place artisans. Well, um, I'd have to look at the page to see why it's being highlighted in the keywords cloud. Um, might be good, it might be a good heads up uh, for whoever is going to optimize this page that that occurrence of words happens a little bit too much, too frequently. So it, it could be uh, useful in terms of just kind of drawing your attention to areas where you might need to clean up the content. It'll talk about the, it'll uh, illustrate for you the top keywords, and these uh, will be the most, um, what they say most optimized are basically the ones that occur the most frequently. And it gives you a good grid as to whether those keywords occur in the title and or in the description and or in any of the headline tags. And those are three key SEO elements. So this is useful information to have. As I go down here, I can see that it's broken down by single keywords, which you see here, and then two word phrases, and then three word phrases. And again, a lot of these are, are, seem to be fairly arbitrary. Like this one here, you can see browsers getting people. Well, obviously it's been pulled out of a series of, of sentences. Um, doesn't really have much bearing on optimizing the page. I do like the fact that it'll give you the keywords that are found in the anchor text, which is the clickable part of links that are on the page. And so this is, uh, often this is an area that we look at closely when it comes to SEO, and particularly when it comes to trying to make sure we don't over-optimize a site so that we don't use the same keywords over and over again in the anchor tags. Let's go back and see which of these other tabs we might want to take a look at. Uh, the social media tab, I think, is um, not very helpful. It doesn't tell me whether there's a Facebook page created or a Twitter page created. It does give me an idea of whether some structured data is used that will help if this page was shared on social media. When I go to the Usability tab and scroll down here, it, this is where it will give me an idea of whether the website has been optimized for mobile. And the fact that it has a motive, mo mobile viewport shows that this page has at least, in, um, it's intended to be optimized for mobile. What I would like to see on this page that I'm not seeing is a preview of how the page would look on mobile and desktop devices. And that's pretty common to SEO checkup tools nowadays where, where it will show a preview. And, and this page would be more useful if it could show that preview. Let's take a look at reputation. Um, so here it'll do a check on links coming back to the site, and um, it says it's uh, very poor. In other words, not many web pages on the internet link to this particular web page. Um, one thing that I think is kind of nice is it just uh, does a check on Web of Trust to see whether anybody has indicated this is a suspicious page, and I think that's a good thing. And so as we uh, scroll down here, we can see there's no red flags. And, and a lot of tools don't do this, so it, it is good that this is included in this particular tool. Let's go over to the speed side of things. And speed is becoming increasingly a, an important point online. And so it does measure speed and response times and so forth. Be the type of thing that um, where it gives you a lot of technical information that if you're not a developer, you would need to turn over to your developer to have them work on. And then finally, the last tab is server. And the server is sort of like a miscellaneous category, but it does tell us things like the server technology. And it'll tell us whether it's um, operating over a secure protocol, namely HTTPS or not. And then give us uh, some of the headers, which Again, for most people, this is going to be um, not very useful information. 
Bottom line is I'd, I'd probably rate this tool something like a C. Um, I, I actually like it quite a bit. I don't think it's a bad tool. I like the fact that it's so lean. Uh, um, I, I'm even sort of uh, attracted to the fact that it, it's operating as an ad-based tool rather than taking my email address from me. At least I'll, I'm done with the ads when I'm done with using the tool. So again, this is SEO Analyzer from SEO Centro, and um, a, a fairly serviceable tool, but definitely you're going to have to spend some time learning about the information that it gives back to you. And when it comes to that, if you do need help understanding a lot of these things that I've been talking about, that's why we started the Horizon Web Marketing Academy. So I'll give you a little plug for the Horizon Web Marketing Academy. I'll give you a link on screen. And then I'm going to give you some links in the description below the video. Links both to this tool, to a blog post where we review the tool online, and also to the academy where we offer SEO training. Uh, some of it is free and some of it is for a fee. So check it out. Subscribe to this video if you'd like to see more reviews of SEO tools, tips on how to perform search engine uh, optimization on your website, or just uh, information about the digital marketing landscape. And again, I'm Ross Barefoot, and thanks for taking the time today. I'll see you the next time around.